So the subject of sort of this this relationship between awe or wonder and religiosity has come up here, and and I've I've interviewed a lot of scientists, including a lot of atheists, and I've known and very prominent people, um, Richard Dawkins, E. O. Wilson, and I think I haven't interviewed Carl Sagan, but I think he would fall in this camp of. Mm-hmm. Atheists who basically have come to use awe and wonder, my reading of it is as a substitute for religion. And I guess the question is, is that a fair thing to do? Uh, Or is that kind of, I don't know, are they talking about something different than a more traditional spiritual view of awe or wonder? Lisa, do you want to take a crack at that? Well, I've actually written about two of those people, Richard Dawkins and E.O. Wilson. I have a, a chapter on each of them in my recent book. So I think that problematically what they're, what they're suggesting is not just that, that wonder, um, scientific wonder is a kind of alternative religion or spirituality, but that it's a superior one. So what they're saying is if you think you know wonder or that, that you've experienced wonder, you haven't experienced the real thing until you have experienced scientific wonder. And there's a way in which this uh, setting up of science and religion kind of treats religion as if it's a, um, a poor attempt to do what science does, um, as if it's, its function is to explain the world, but it's just doing it badly, which is not really what religion does. So I think there's a, a tendency to focus, for example, on creation stories, as if religion is trying to explain the world in the same way that science does. Religion does a lot of things other than that. So, um, so, so Dawkins, for example, though he talks a lot about wonder, he's a little bit uncomfortable with this word. So he has a, a book that he wrote for young people, sort of kids and teenagers, called The Magic of Reality. Um, and so what he's arguing there is that, you know, you may wonder at the sun and the moon and, you know, the seasons, but but you really need to direct your wonder at the explanation of those things. And then you're, you're wondering at reality. So there's a kind of um, policing, I think, of wonder here to say that unless you've experienced it in the scientific sense, you have not experienced real wonder. So that, that's more the Dawkins account. I think for, so you, you think he's yeah. wrong? Sorry? You think he's wrong? I think he's wrong, yes, because I think in part he doesn't understand how, what religion is. Um, but also that that's not a very interesting account of wonder for the average person to, to tell them that the scientists have got, have got hold of the thing and that you need to direct your sense of wonder to those things. Again, in part because the average person is not going to be able to experience that sort of wonder firsthand. And so it puts the scientist in the position of dictating to the rest of us what's real and what we should therefore direct our, our wonder at. Now, as you know, Dawkins is very uncomfortable with mystery. So he understands um, science to dispel mystery. So you know, he goes after the romantic poets, for example, for, for dwelling on you know, the world in a grain of sand. Rather than, rather than solving the puzzle, they're interested in, in dwelling in it and sort of reveling in the unknown. And he thinks that's a kind of despicable thing to do. <laughs> so do, does, does Dawkins think that the experience of scientific wonder is distinct from the experience of religious wonder? Or is it that he thinks that there's some greater value moral moral worth to scientific wonder compared to yes because oh well both maybe but i think the the scientist keeps working at it you know he's the scientist is not content to to gawk so this, there's an association there of wonder with you know just sort of the, the instead of pursuing the puzzle and solving it of just saying ah oh, let's just you know dwell in sort of childlike gawking you know whereas the scientist gets to work to solve the problem and then when the problem is solved, one wonders at the solution, not the thing, you know, the mystery that initially prompted it. That's just not a formulation, I think, of wonder that's very appealing to the average person. <laughs>